Hey YouTube, what you're about to watch is a new segment we call Change My Mind. Pretty simple, uh, we go out and set up in public and uh, pick a topic. In this video, it's Second Amendment, where I just say, hey listen, I'm pro-gun, change my mind. And we actually allow people from other points of view to come up and proactively change my mind. I'd love to hear from you what, what, what topics you would like to hear discussed on this. Uh, also, it's important, this isn't about just a debate or a highlight reel. The point to this exercise is to actually get people to question their own point of view and see if their argument is rational. And uh, maybe at the end of it, they'll end up changing their own mind. So pro-gun, Second Amendment, change my mind, enjoy. What's your name? Danny. Danny. Stephen, nice to meet you, Danny. Likewise. Okay. I'm very pro-gun, pro-Second Amendment. Changed my mind. I'm open. Okay. First, I, I have a little clarification. Um, do you believe guns have uses other than um, hunting? Yes. What do you believe those are? Uh, I believe that the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment, I should clarify, is about the basic right to self-preservation. Be that from uh, internal threats, be that from domestic threats, or be that from a threat of a tyrannical government, that's the purpose and intent of the Second Amendment. That is my contention. I agree that the Second Ten Amendment has that intention. However, I do think that guns aren't necessarily the most effective way of defense. Okay. I believe that um, guns are so easy to Sorry, would you mind holding the mic just to you? Just so okay. I can, yeah, sorry. So, people are talking, so I, get loud. I believe that if you have a gun, if, for example, in the case of a home invasion, sure. if you are a good gun owner, have it in a safe, in a safe place, and, you know, not like under your pillow or anything, right. um, and you take care of it, then by the time you get to your gun, it probably is already too late to defend yourself. Sure, well, I guess let's define sort of, maybe we're not disagreeing, it seems like maybe you're pro-Second Amendment and you believe that people have the right to purchase and bear arms. Um, as to whether an individual is effective in defending their house with their own firearm, I can tell you that mine is very easily accessible, and m many of them are, um, and that wouldn't be the scenario. So, it doesn't change the right for me to have that firearm to protect my home. Uh, I also believe that, um, there is definitely a reason to have them for sport, um, not not just hunting, but also um, aiming practice, gun sure. ranges. Um, I have a friend who um, was uh, on their way to actually becoming a professional marksman, um, but then they got glaucoma. Yeah, but that, that's not what the Second Amendment is about. So I guess we're still, we agree on that. Yeah. You're probably not looking to change my mind on that. You agree people have the right to purchase and bear arms. Yes, I, I okay. have a disagreement with the Mostly the um, concealed carry laws and such, in that um, I believe that you know having a gun um, for you know the purposes I've set out um, is perfectly fine, but that's no reason to carry one around in public, particularly because um, it could be used against you. Someone could grab it off your person and threaten you with it. Someone could take your car and run you over with it. Yes. But does that mean that we can't sell you a car? Cars actually kill way more people than guns. But cars are necessary to get to point A to from from point A to point B. They're No well, they're not. You can take public transportation, you can take a bike, you can walk. You not can everywhere. Not everyone has public transportation. There's always a way. Many but rural is, areas is it, you need you need a car in order to get several miles to the grocery store to get your food for so, the day. Let me ask you this, is it your contention that because something you can legally own could be used against you or someone else, the government has the right to tell you that you couldn't own said item? Is that your presupposition? I believe that it's not like you can't own it. You can own it. It's that you can't, for no good reason, bring it out in public. What would be no good reason? What would be a good reason for someone to have to be able to exercise their right to protect themselves? A good reason is I am bringing this gun to the gun range to go... No, to protect myself. Let's get rid of the sports and the hunting aspect of it, right? The second one exists to protect there's... yourself. So why is it, again, I'm hearing, why does the government have the right, if I'm a law-abiding citizen, to tell me that I cannot protect myself with my firearm? 
because the whole point of having a government is to trust the government to protect you. No. To... No, that's not true. Because as, as a woman, I feel very threatened walking around at night on my own. You should probably get a gun. I have an app on my phone where I can set it up where one touch brings the police to my location and it actually alerts the police um, that I might have a call when I click a certain button. Like if I'm feeling somewhat threatened, I click one L button. Let me ask a question here real quick. And that let me ask a question. Um, the police come. What, what would the police be able to do that you wouldn't? They are able to physically, if not intimidate, then um, well, let's say it's escalates. This. Let's say a very violent attacker, okay? You call the police. You are calling the police because? Because I fear for my life. And they would protect you? Yes. With? With firearms, because they are trained and um, they, have, they have a legal responsibility to use those firearms okay. properly in a way that casual firearms owners do not. Final question. Do you believe we have a police brutality problem in the United yes. States? Yes. I do. I believe that police need to be trained better than they are now. But do you believe in a society where police exclusively are granted the rights to carry firearms? No. Police, not only police. I say, I say police should have firearms to deal with um, violent um, individuals that threaten the police officer's life. Okay. Whereas the everyday person should be able to rely on the police to do that. Now the problem we have is that we aren't able to rely on the police to do that. Right. I don't think the problem, I don't think the solution to that is get guns. I think the solution to that is um, reform the police department. Um, I disagree with you. Do you think that maybe after this conversation, hearing some of the things that you said, talking about how you believe it's the government, it's the job to trust the government, and then have talked about inherent corruption in the government police force, I would encourage you and hope that maybe you would reconsider some of these stances moving forward about having a society where only the police have the right to carry firearms. I think maybe we would find some common ground that think about it, and then maybe if I'm still here, come back and we can we can talk about it. But I know we got some other people here in line. Okay. What was your, what was your name again? Danny. Danny, thank you so much, Danny. I appreciate you, you taking the time. And one last little quip. Um, I'm also um, particularly vulnerable to police as a um, disabled trans person. So I do really understand the police brutality issue. Right. But um, I think that guns aren't the answer. So thank you. Thank you. Just isn't done that way. The son of the queen. The last hang. Alright. What was your name, sir? Uh, Sammy. What's your name? Sam Steven, nice to meet you, Sam. Would you mind holding the microphone up when you, you talk just so we can uh, you, know, you know how those work. Talking to the talking okay. to the netty thing. Yeah. Um, Sam, so you said you're a pro-gun, but you believe in some controls. Yeah. Okay. You're in college, you're obviously a smart guy. I think it's important then to define what it is we're discussing, right? Yeah. When you say some controls, uh, what kind of controls? Controls that actually, um, you know, a lot of Americans, when they're get, trying to get a license for guns or they're trying to um, purchase guns or whatever, uh, they should be able uh, they should be able to document it, and not with paper, but with uh, machine documentation. Uh, so. Um, and on top of that, they should go through a psych evaluation of if they're too violent or they have a class of being too violent, then they should be restricted or completely uh, opted out of even owning a gun, depending on how violent they are. So um, quick, me, before we go, so you're, you're saying that uh, if somebody has a documented history of violence, mm -hmm. they should not be able to purchase a firearm? Yes, or they should be restricted to only probably a handgun. Okay, well that's interesting. I'd like to go back mm -hmm. to that. Do you, you mind holding the mic a little closer? Sorry, because okay. everyone's getting loud here. Um, so if I were to tell you it's already the law, I assume you've never purchased a firearm. No. Okay, it's already the law. You can't buy a firearm if you're a, if you're a violent mm -hmm. criminal. It's not allowed. Yeah. Um, and they said, but maybe only restricted to a handgun. Yeah. That's, I find that curious. Why would someone be restricted to a handgun above other guns? Because, here's the thing. Again, every American has a right to own a firearm, and that's the Second Amendment. We cannot change that. We cannot um, take that away from them. Sure. And that's something we should always protect. I appreciate that. But um, 
demoting them down to, um, let's say, a handgun, that doesn't take away the fact that, hey, maybe someone might come into their house and, um, you know, might steal something or might affect their family or whatever. And just because they're a criminal doesn't always mean they're just, like, always going to be violent and, all, the, and sure. all that stuff. If they have a handgun to at least protect themselves and not cause mass uh, damage to, like, what happened in Las Vegas, right. then... That way, they're protecting themselves, and they won't be out there to harm others. And if they do, we also have the police uh, at hand to at least, you know, limit casualties and all that stuff. Forgive me if it seems like I'm interrupting. I just because mm -hmm. you go to, to a, I want to kind of address each point so we can find out whether we agree yeah. or not. So, um, uh, my understanding is that you're saying we should limit these people to handguns yes. as opposed to long rifles. Uh, semi-automatic rifles yes. with which they could commit mass damage so in order yes. to mitigate the damage yes what if I were to tell you that unequivocally it's not even close the vast majority of mass shootings take place with handguns well uh, again people put modifications on the guns and I understand that a lot of mass shootings also happen with handguns no most the, almost nearly all statistically. yeah but I also think that um, Actually, let me refer, uh, let me step back a bit. Okay. And where I'm pulling this idea of handguns is there was an article I read about someone creating a handgun that only registered to yours, like, biometrics. Mm -hmm. uh, have you heard of it? Yes, I have. It's yeah. a disaster, but yes, continue. It is a disaster, but um, the reason I'm touching on that is because it's a really good idea. And um, the NRA, which I kind of have a problem with right now, is uh, not letting us research guns, in a sense, or making them completely safe. As from what I understand, I'm not to um, educate on what the NRA is doing right now. It's just how they conduct more research on guns than anyone in the country. Yeah, and uh, they always find a way to like make sure there's no gun controls going on and all that stuff. But um, let me say, people are able put, uh, able to put modifications on, on their guns, which mm -hmm. of course should be completely unallowed, no matter what. Uh, like bump stocks, there's also um, there's also this. What is a bump stock? A bump stock is basically uh, if you fire a gun, that thing just bounces back. There's also a needle in which you can put in your guns, mm -hmm. where uh, if you pull the trigger, it constantly forces your finger back. So it's kind of like an automatic rifle. Right. Uh, and that, of course, should be illegal as well. Um, and going back to why I'm saying uh, demote people to um, handguns, yes, there almost all uh, mass shootings are coming in with handguns. Again, I'm saying people should go through background checks and all that stuff. But that already happened. That already exists. But it's not too refined. Yeah. I mean, Here, here's one thing I would say, mm -hmm. respectfully, and I would just, I do disagree with you on several instances, but I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. I think that there's a discussion taking place in this country, yeah. and it's between two camps. You're not going to like what I'm about to say, but it's not meant as a personal insult. No, no. It's between gun owners mm -hmm. and the completely ill-informed. If you've purchased a firearm, you would know that everything you've just said is untrue. Yeah. And, it's, and I don't say that to insult you. No, no, no you're As a matter of right. fact, I would recommend you go purchase a firearm for yourself. Even if you're getting a, just getting a, a gun, a, a revolver. Okay. You know what I mean? A 22 revolver. Okay. You'll go through a background check. You'll see, ask the questions. They're going to ask for your license. Mm -hmm. They're going to make sure it's the same address that you currently live. It'll probably be the most stringent background check you've ever gone through. Okay. It's more stringent than social security. Okay. So all of those things already exist. A bump stock is not what you described it to be. As a matter of fact, I can make a bump stock with my belt loop. Really? Yes, okay. it's, about, it's a technique. A bump stock allows you to optimize a certain technique. Okay. Um, and it's already illegal to modify a gun to a fully automatic rifle. Okay. This is already illegal, right? So someone taking a firearm mm -hmm. and modifying it to make it an illegal firearm okay. is already against the law. It's already against the law to purchase a firearm if you are a convicted felon or if you're a violent criminal. Um, you mentioned the NRA. There's so much research conducted on firearms. As a matter of fact, if I were to ask you, uh, how many defensive uses do you think there are uh, of firearms each year? If you were to guess, you know, about there's. Ten, uh, I would say a good couple hundred thousand, maybe into millions. Yeah, into millions. Yeah. How many gun deaths do you think there are? Um, I would say around uh, ten to twenty thousand per year. It's actually a little higher than that, but mm -hmm. lower than that if you remove suicides. Okay. So again, there's th these are important, and a lot of these come from, from pro-firearm associations. Mm -hmm. I think what is important when we have this discussion, and, and I hope it's been illuminating, maybe you'll, you'll rethink some of your points of view, I would really encourage you to buy a firearm. Yeah. Even if you go right back and just trade it in. You can uh -huh. buy it and then give it right back to the gun shop, and they'll mm -hmm. consign it where they run a background show if you don't want to spend the money. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's an experience where you, you learn 
the things that you thought were not true. Okay. And I think it starts from the, the presupposition, and I think we start in the common ground. The Second Amendment is not about hunting. Mm -hmm. It's about the basic right to self-preservation. Uh -huh. And we either uh, support the idea that we have the right to protect ourselves, mm -hmm. both our houses, our families, our, our, our property, from local threats yeah. or tyrannical threats from the government. We either agree on that, and I think we do, or we don't. Yeah. And if you agree that it's a right, like free speech is a right, yeah. the government cannot remove a basic human right unless you've foregone it by violating someone else's rights. Yeah. And, I mean, that's... I love, uh, I love the Second Amendment, I love the Constitution, and I love America of how it is, and I just love the idea that if some other country tries to invade us, we have the fire. not only do we have the police and a great military, but we also have the American people who are definitely going to be pissed off yeah. and shoot the other guys. Uh, I appreciate that you recognize that. What was your name again, sir? Uh, Sammy. Sammy? But Thank you so much, Sammy. One thing I want to ask, okay. um, and you were telling me to go ahead and purchase a firearm. Now, I don't mean to sound offensive to anyone or any viewer. No, no, no problem at all. The thing is, I'm a person of color, and I'm not even a black person. I'm just a brown person. Yeah. And the derogatory, the stereotype I'm always presented is I'm basically a terrorist, um, just by my skin color, right? Mm -hmm. No one knows my background or, uh, and all that stuff. And I've come from a very uh, conservative um, location back in Florida. Sure. Now, um, if I purchase a firearm and if I am seen around with a gun, I know for a fact people are, are always going to view me as a threat. Well, first so off, there's no that. one's saying carry, you don't need to carry it around out mm -hmm. in the open. Yeah. Uh, you legally can now in Texas, uh, but the concealed carry open, carry, that's further on down the trail. Mm -hmm. Isn't it wonderful that there are horrible racist assholes out there, right? Mm -hmm. Who might look at you a certain way because of the color of your skin and think that you're a terrorist. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful that that doesn't affect your rights? Yeah, that's completely amazing. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't affect, because guess what? That background check, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. If you haven't committed a crime, mm -hmm. You have the same rights as that racist asshole down the street. Yeah, definitely. And that's the only thing is, you know, we either have to agree uh, on the freedom of, of the right for all of us to protect ourselves or we don't. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine what it's like if I'm sure you've dealt with, with you know, racist encounters your whole life. And it's, it's, it's always sad to hear. Yeah. But um, again, that doesn't dictate policy. And I would look at that and say, hey, isn't it great that despite what one individual thinks, it doesn't <laughs> affect your rights as an American citizen. And uh, that's the beauty of blind justice. And if you give that authority to the government, or if you give that authority to an individual or a committee, yeah. guess what? It just takes one of those racist people mm -hmm. to make that decision for you, or vice versa. So it's it's pretty important, right? Yeah. Especially for minorities to make to ensure that uh, that they're not in, their rights aren't infringed upon by the mob of the majority, right? Yeah. I don't think that anyone should be able to vote that brown people can't have guns uh, any more than I think no one should be able to vote that anyone here can't have guns. Yeah, but it's also um, let's say I'm going to defend myself at home with the gun I've purchased sure. and all that stuff. And I happen to shoot the intruder. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's a threat or not. Now, here comes the main problem as to why I personally won't buy a gun. Though I love guns, I won't buy a gun. Um, if that gets out into the media, I'm a brown person with a gun that killed an intruder. Yeah. Now, um, in that scenario already, I'm always going. I'm already going to be classified as someone who's again very violent and all that stuff but I don't um, necessarily know I don't necessarily know what that's true what are you studying uh, me yeah. I'm a computer engineer computer engineer yeah um, I would encourage you we do have to, I know there are other people there, so we have to mm -hmm. go semi but yeah, I would yeah. encourage you to read up more on the Socratic method because yeah. I think that if you question some of the things and I think we've done it here where mm -hmm. you've reestablished some of your your views a little yeah, bit yeah. Um, I think if you question some of the premises of, of your uh, your positions here you'll realize they're not necessarily true yeah, and, and not necessarily something that you can certainly confirm is true. Yeah. And I do think, especially in today's era, more important than political correctness, more important than sensitivity, mm -hmm. more important than opinion, yeah. is more important than even common ground is truth. Yes. And I think if you examine some of your premises, I say this respectfully, I think you'll find that they are incorrect. Yeah, and that's what I really hope from coming into here because I'm saying I want uh, I want gun control, right? Right. And just sitting down and hearing about this, of course, I listen to uh, TYT and I listen to very progressive news outlets. I, I'm not, I'm not innocent in any ways uh, with this uh, biased media. Who do you listen to on the right? Uh, on the right, uh, I would on, say on the right, like TYT on the far, far left, right? Socialists. Yeah. Who do you listen to to balance that out? Yeah. I. Okay. 
to be honest, nothing else. I honestly, mostly I listen to CNN. Uh, anything on TYT is just main events that happen around the world. I never mm -hmm. really take their side because, again, I don't like socialism that much. I think there has to be a balance. So do you think watching TYT and, and CNN, do you feel maybe as though um, they've almost, starting st to a startling degree, mm -hmm. have under-equipped you? Yes, definitely. No, and that's because, and, and, mm -hmm. and maybe it's by design. Like the fact that, that, some, uh, that you may not know that there already are background checks. Yeah. If they're news, that's their job to let you know. Yeah, and that's definitely the case. And again, I'm also not comfortable with watching Fox News because I know there's some stuff that are not true over there, and I've already uh, found that out. Sure. But again, going to CNN, of course, I also know some stuff are not true. But I didn't know it would lie to this extent. Again, um, TYT, great people there. I really think uh, they just need to bump up the information a bit more. And it's just... Bump up the information. Like yeah. Maybe, maybe you could start watching some more right-leaning channels. Yeah, Balance definitely. Um, but it's just kind of heartbreaking that um, I'm, look, I'm looking at only like left channels. I'm still not getting enough information or I'm not getting all the information I need. Right. Yeah, and thank you for this uh, experience in telling me all this stuff. Thank you, know? you Sammy. I appreciate it, brother. Right. God bless in your studies. Right. Engineering, that's no joke. It's not... Are you guys uh, students here? No, I'm not a student here. Okay. Do you have an ID with me? I do have ID with me. Take a look at that. Is there a reason for you needing to look at my identification officer? There you are, YouTube. I remain unconvinced. Though I did enjoy meeting the Oracle from the Minority Report, I do think, uh, hopefully, this is a productive uh, thing to do. A lot of people talk about wanting to engage in discussion, and they don't do it. You don't have to agree. You don't have to find common ground. You just have to be rational. And I uh, would love to hear what other topics you'd like discussed. And subscribe by hitting the subscribe button or one of these other videos, I think, playing in boxes. I'm not entirely sure because YouTube changes everything. This might not even exist anymore because it's been struck down. Oh, well. What do, what, what do you do? YouTube overlords. They're going to do. YouTube overlord going to YouTube overlord.